How's it going everybody? Some of you might be thinking right now why a video on such a basic thing as projectile feeds? Well, feed balance is a rare thing in For Honor, but we've seen some in the last few months and if I recall correctly those were mostly nerfs of the really strong feeds. Because of that, some of the feeds that we've been disregarding for a long time are now somewhat viable again. And that includes a lot of the throwing weapon feats, but as you might have guessed, not all of them are created equal. Damage is pretty obvious, but we also see big differences in both the wind-up animation as well as the speed of the projectile. Granted, the projectile speed isn't that big of a deciding factor as most of the instances you'd use to feed is at close lock-on distance anyways. Nonetheless, I went over all of them. Uh, I took this little bridge on the Vikings breach map. If someone feels the need to take the measured time and guess the distance between the two characters to calculate the speed, feel free to post your findings down below, I couldn't be asked. I'll link the spreadsheet in the video description. But what is really important is the time it takes for the feed to activate. We're looking at huge discrepancies here. Obviously, the faster the better, especially the two throwing axes from both Shaman and Zerka have a really short animation. With 300 milliseconds, I doubt anyone can react to it. On the other hand, we have the Samurai Bow feat that has 900 milliseconds of animation. This should be a free dodge if you see the guy using it, meaning no free kill on a low HP target with that feat. Using the free aim to activate it doesn't change the timing either. With the gain in popularity of these feats, you should make it a habit to keep an eye on your opponent's feats. Under the health bar, you see all the feats he currently has unlocked, and on top of that, you can also see whether the feat is on cooldown or not. If it is greyed out, it's on cooldown. If it's white, it's not. So especially against the fast animations, you might be able to prediction dodge it. That's when a new layer of mind games might come into play where people actually heavy faint into throwing feet, for example. Be creative and you might be able to surprise even the most alert player. This brings us to the tracking of these feats. While locked on and on flat ground, these things will pretty much track all movement except for dodges and rolls. The problem they have is that as soon as we have uneven terrain or even worse stairs or slopes, all of the tracking goes out of the window. It's just two small stairs here and the projectile already almost goes through them. The combination of movement and changes in the set axis make it almost impossible to hit someone, so be really careful and make sure you're shooting at someone on flat ground. Similar problems are with the stealth feet, as long as the guy is holding still you can hit him just fine, but simply walking left and right will make you miss. Don't waste your feet, the cooldown of the tier 3 ones isn't that short that you can afford to miss these shots. Next thing I want to talk about is the fact that these feet stagger. All of them remove the guard for 600 milliseconds. Doesn't matter whether it's a tier 2 kunai or a ballista shot, it's always 600. This means that if you coordinate these with an attack, you can get in free damage. When we recorded this, the two didn't miss it a single time after they agreed on how to time it. On top of that, the damage reduction applied from it is only 25%, so you're barely missing out on any damage. 50 damage from a feet and the heavy is nothing to sneer at. Other than that, there's not really a lot to talk about. One of the big upsides of these feats was that you could finish someone off that was low and was holding his revenge. But after last week's patch, we don't really have revenge gain in 1v1s and in outnumbered situations, the opponent might not even be low enough to use it when he gets his first revenge. Using them to finish off targets that are low doesn't matter if he has revenge or not is probably still the best option. These long range snipes you see posted here now are pure luck, I won't even mention those. Also keep in mind that these feats ledge, if someone is too close to a cliff, just shoot the guy off. So that's it I guess, if you still have questions or want to add something I might have forgotten, feel free to post in a comment. Until then, I hope the video was helpful, thanks for watching, laters everybody.